Okay, uh, 1.6 down algebra 2, solving linear inequalities. <clears throat> so we're going to solve and graph it. You solve them just like you solve equations. Forget that there's even a different sign there. Okay, so if you were to solve this like an equation, how would you get y by itself? You would add 8 to both sides, right? Minus 8, so we add 8. 12 plus 8 is 20. The 8's cancel out, so we have 5y is less than 20. I divide both sides by 5 because it's 5 times y, right? So the opposite of multiplication is division. So I divide them, <clears throat> ending up with y is less than 4. So what that means when I go to graph this is um, I use a closed dot when it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. I use an open dot when it's less than or greater than. So for this problem, since it's less than, I'm going to use an open dot at 4. So there it is. Think of this like an arrow when you go to graph this, right? When you go to graph it, think of it like an arrow. This is a less than sign. So I need to shade everything to the left of that point because this is facing to the left. But this concept only works when the variable is on the left hand side. So you need to make sure you rewrite everything so the variable is on the left hand side for this to work. Example two. To solve this, it's just like how we solved them before. When you were solving this, you need to combine all your x's on one side and all your numbers on the other. So to start, I'm going to subtract 2x. Because this is a positive 2x, I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. So when I do that, I subtract a 2. 6x minus 2x is 4x. I still have a 1 left over on this side. I still have a negative 1 left over here. So now I need to combine my numbers together. So I add one to both sides. So by doing that, the ones cancel out. I get 2 is less than or equal to 4 uh, times x. So since it's 4 times x, I have to divide both sides by 4. And when I do that, I end up with 2 over 4 is less than or equal to x. And 2 over 4, I can divide both the top and the bottom by 2 to get 1 half. Now, when we go to do this, not a problem, it's just whenever we're doing these problems, we need to write the x on the left. So literally take the whole thing and flip it over. Every item that's there, just flip it. Now that the x is on the left, now the variable is on the left, now I can graph it. So because this is a greater than or equal to sign at 1 half, I can put a closed dot. And now, which direction is the arrow pointing? It's pointing to the right, so I would shade everything to the right-hand side. So an and function. Well, an and function means it's in between, kind of like a sandwich. So what that means is um, when you go to graph an and function, it's going to be shaded in between. When you have an or, it's going to be um, graphed on the two outsides, and the middle is going to be open. So because this is an and, I'm going to find a 2 and I'm going to find a 9, so let's say it's 2 and 9. Since it's less thans, it's an open hole, open hole, and and means it's shaded right in the middle. Or means it's shaded on either end. So once again, since it's less than and greater than, that means it's an open hole, open hole. And look at it in terms of an arrow. The arrow is facing to the left, so I shade everything to the left. And this arrow is facing to the right, so I shade everything to the right. That's why the middle is open there on the ors. Solve this one. Okay, so when you have the equation um, in the center to solve, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So I need to get t by itself. So whatever I'm doing, I have to do to both the 10 and the negative 2. So what I'm telling you is I want to get t by itself. So this is minus 8. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides, meaning I need to add 8 here. And I need to add 8 here. So the 8 crosses out in the center. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. 10 plus 8 is 18. I still have a 3t in the middle. This is 3 times t, so whatever I do to one side, I have to do to all of them, which means I divide everything by 3. So the 3s cancel out in the center. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 18 divided by 3 is 6, and the t is in the center. This is written like an and, meaning I'm going to shade everything in between. So I go to the 2, and because it's less than or equal to, I put a closed point there and a closed point there, and I shade everything in the, between them. 
So with this one, this is just two different inequalities that I'm asked to solve. So to solve the first one, to get x by itself, I would subtract 3 on both sides. So by doing, because it's plus 3, so minus 3 is the opposite. So I get 2x equals, or sorry, 2x is less than 2. So since it's multiplication, 2 times x, I divide both sides by 2, and I get x is less than 1. On the other side, I have 4x minus 7 is greater than 9. So um, since it's minus 7, I would add 7 to both sides. I would get 4x, because those cross out, is greater than 16. I would divide both sides by 4, and when I divide them both by 4, I get x is greater than 4. So I need to graph both of these items, and since they are both less than or greater than, that means I have an open hole at 1, and an open hole at 4. This arrow is facing the left, so I shade everything to the left, and that one's to the right, so I shade everything to the right, and so there you go. Like to see what a skater's body really looks like. All right, so example six here. We have added enough antifreeze to your car's cooling system to lower the freezing point to negative 35 degrees Celsius and raise the boiling point to 125. So the cooling will remain a liquid as long as the temperature is in between those two. Write the inequality in Fahrenheit. So if C equals this right here, right, if that's what C is, instead of C being in the middle, I'm going to plug all of that in the middle. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to get rid of that fraction. So to get rid of that fraction, I am going to multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. Since it's 5 over 9, I'm going to multiply by 9 over 5. But since I'm multiplying by 9 over 5, I have to do it to both sides, which means that side and that side. So that cancels out. So all I have left in the center is f minus 32. 9 over 5 times negative 35 is negative 63. 125 times 9 over 5 is 225. So um, to solve for f, I add 32 to both sides, and we end up with negative 31 and 257. <clears throat> so basically what that means, in Fahrenheit, for the coolant to remain a liquid, um, it can't get any lower than 31 degrees outside, 31 degrees that we know, and it can't get any warmer than 257 degrees. Uh, if it's less than 31, uh, negative 31, that means it's going to freeze, and if it's higher than 257, it'll probably start to boil and then just kind of disappear into a gas. Well, I guess that makes sense in a really sad way. There's your homework. If you have any questions uh, or concerns, please feel free to um, email me, check the Moodle site, or check the website for any assistance that you might need. Thank you.